Ah, I thought you would not be back until tomorrow. And how would you know that? No, forget that. Does my staying the night elsewhere have any effect on you? You were just waiting for the support opportunity, weren't you? <laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm Ash Mannix, and once again, I'm playing the house in Fata Morgana. Um, this should be part uh, 11, maybe. Either way, um, I had taken a bit of a break until the previous playthrough. Uh, I think it was part 10 or whatever. Um, and we had st in the previous episode, we had started a new story about the white-haired girl once again, but this time she is married to a 19th century investor called Jacopo, I think, who seems to be a complete arsehole. Um, and it just seems to be her fate to suffer... Just to suffer in every lifetime that she seems to exist in. So, and supposedly we're getting a, every um, closer and closer to knowing who we are. Because we as the protagonist or as the main character seem to... We've lost our memories from the beginning. So um, let us inspect our memories and get back into it. Beautiful recollections. Let's load this. And I will hide my face. So I think in the last um, episode, the Jack, this is uh, she, the white haired girl is retelling um, the story of their, well, in quotes, quote unquote honeymoon, where he took her out to visit the town and he had taken her to a, it's like a photography shop or a shop of like gadgets. And she, she was shown some sort of collide, well not a kaleidoscope, but like moving picture, little gadget. And so after that, they went to get something to eat at a restaurant. And here we are. <clears throat> so. From there, we went to a restaurant for dinner. You call this a pizza? The crust is an atrocity. It's like I'm chewing on rubber. How can you wave my country's flag and not serve spaghetti? Do you have any shame at all? This wine is pitifully unbalanced. Far too high levels of acidity. Listen to me carefully. The house wine is the face of a restaurant. He complained about every little thing. It was a complete disaster. But curiously enough, I was not at all put off by his behaviour. When the sun set, the carriage made its way to a nearby hill. The cool nighttime breeze felt wonderful on my skin, flushed from the alcohol, and the light from the gas lamps had a comforting warmth to it. Though Jacopo had complained about the quality of the wine, once he had intoxicated himself, his mood improved visibly. It made him unexpectedly talkative. Look out at the city. A gloomy town. It shuts down at night, isn't suited to expansion or growth, but the city isn't like that. You can see people walking beneath the lamps, and you can hear the bustle of them talking. This is a city that still has plenty of room to grow. As they ride the rising wave of the economy, many, many more people will gather here. More people means more money in circulation. More money in circulation means the city grows, companies are founded, and more goods are bought and sold. Will it really change so drastically? It can be difficult to see what's happening from the inside. The majority of people just go about their daily lives, and the next thing they know, things are different. No, I'd wager most don't notice the changes at all. Only those with eyes sharp enough to realise what's happening can seize success. I cannot afford to overlook even the most minute change. Do you have a dream of some kind? A dream. I'm not sure if it's easy enough to attain to call a dream. Otherwise, might call it. Others might call it greed or perhaps ambition. Don't laugh now. My intention is to make the world mine. The world. Yes, the world. Oh shit, he's deal. 
And to do that, you need neither physical strength nor kindness, but money and influence. People have no choice but to kneel before those forces. Why are you so intent on obtaining power? Because I want to change my country, I imagine. Your country? You are aware that I, like you, am an emigrant, right? I emigrated from an island in the Mediterranean, though not the same island as you. My country is a peculiar place, where candor and violence go hand in hand. As a whole, the country is on the poor side, and if nobody does anything about that... I am one of but a few of my fellow countrymen who have set his sights on the new world. They are falling far behind other nations. If I find success here, perhaps that will catch their attention. But if it doesn't, then my country is doomed to collapse. You have much love for your homeland. My feelings are a little more complicated than mere love. But that's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Well, I'll have to remember not to get myself drunk around a woman again. Forget everything I just said. It's about time we head back to the house. All right, but, um... What is it? Is it all right if I provide you encouragement as you try to attain your dream? I know my presence is more likely to be a hindrance, but I would like to be there to watch as you trek forward. I suppose. Do as you wish. Thank you. You have my support then. Um, d darling? Uh, send a shiver down my spine, though not an unpleasant one. I'm glad to have you as my partner. I was, without a doubt, happy then. His smile, the things he said, the Fenicus wheel he gave me, they were all undeniably real. And those memories give me the will to wait, for the day things go back the way they were. They allow me to believe. This is an odd song. Uh, who's speaking here? This is something that actually happened to another maid. She heard a sound in the middle of the night, a sound like dripping water. At first she thought it was raining, so she looked through the window. There wasn't a cloud in the sky to cover the stars. Maybe it's a faucet, she thought. She stepped out of her room and into the corridor. Compared to her room, it was unearthly chilly. The maid regretted not bringing something to cover herself with, but that didn't make any sense. Normally, the temperature wasn't that much cold outside her room, her night clothes had always been more than enough for a trip to the lavatory. Wondering what the reason could be, she made her way toward the sound. But then, she realised something. There were no faucets in the direction she was going. Rather, she was headed toward a hall. The mansion where she served had many halls, but this one was off in a far corner of the house, the least used hall of them all. It had a high roof, but not a lot of space so it was difficult to make good use of. It also had a somewhat heavy air to it, a very curious room. It was the kind of place you might assign someone to clean as part of their hazing. Anyway, when the maid realised the sound was coming from that particular hall, she, as you might expect, let out an uncomfortable sigh. But there might be a leak, and having noticed, she couldn't simply ignore it, you know? So, as much as she hesitated, hesitated, she pushed open the doors to the hall. There was nobody there, and it didn't look like anything was leaking either. There were no puddles or water stains anywhere to be found, but she could still hear the sound. Drip, drip, getting louder and louder. Slowly stepping further into the room, looking left, then right, then left again, she searched for the source of the sound, coming to a stop in the centre of the hall. She stood there still, quiet, and then a 
chilly spot on the nape of her neck. With a little yelp, she reached back to feel her neck, but it wasn't wet. Confused, she slowly, wearily tilted her head backward. And there hung a bloody skeleton from the ceiling. Gah! Oh, it's Jackabo. What the fuck? Boah! That's rich! Amazing. Oh my god, you scream like a little girl. Maria, you little... My god, are you men or children? This is my house and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Whose words were those again? Shut your mouth! How do you even know about that? Were you eavesdropping? And another thing, I do not care for the sort of stupid fantastical tales you women so love to pass around. Because they scare you. Ah, you've never been able to handle anything scary, Jacopo. <sighs> what? Don't glare at me like that. You're going to destroy my sights. So, did you come here for the sole purpose of telling me that cheap tripe? Acting tough after the fact that just makes you look like twice as much of a wuss. <clears throat> well, I mean, I did make up a good half of it, but the maid really did hear a sound in the middle of the night. And it came from the back hall of this very mansion. Did you know they used to use... Be a, they used... To, uh, did you know they say it used to be a chapel? Again, I have no interest in you women's little ghost stories. Is that so? You sure you're not just scared? Maria. Well, that said, rumors aren't completely unfounded. This is a pretty old mansion, and it's had a lot of work done to, on it. Kind of feels like it's barely holding itself together. Like a big old, big old clout with pieces from all different time periods. The back hall is one of the oldest patches. There's a huge window on the far end, and supposedly there used to be stained glass in it. It was a depiction of an archangel, they say. Such a shame. I wonder when it was broken. If it were still there, I bet it'd be worth a fortune. I find that hard to believe. First of all, why would anyone put a chapel inside a mansion? But a point, I guess. Now how about you do some actual work instead of distracting yourself with all this nonsense? I do work. But, uh, the other maids can be a bit... Nasty, you know? Dealing with other women isn't like walking on glass. Am I to blame for that? What if I said you were? <laughs> Don't give me that look. They're just not fond of me. Simple as that. Nothing you can do about it. Is that so? Oh yeah, I was talking to the madam. And she was telling me you used to be quite the gentleman. Were you perhaps actually in love by then? You sure don't act like it, so it's easy to miss, but I guess you're not made entirely out of steel. Just like when you were younger, you still... Do not speak of that. The past is not worth remembering. It is unnecessary. So to you, the past ex exists just to be cast aside. I... Nah, it's not important. You don't want me to talk about it. I won't talk about it. But your wife? Never mind. I'll leave you be. I have to get back to work soon, or I'll be staring down the head maid's arctic smile. Uh, Alright. If the fancy strikes me, I'll drop by and we can trade more ghost stories. Maria. Hmm? What? No ghost stories? No, not that. I have not for... I have not forgotten those days. But, no, it's... I... I'll be off then. Alright. If the fancy strikes you, drop by and we can trade something other than ghost stories. <laughs> what I tell you? I'll consider it. Goodbye. Did they used to have some sort of... So they're about the same age. So when he was younger, did they used to like hang out and be friends or something? Even though she was his maid. Or was there a forbidden love there? Hmm. God damn it. 
Can't escape anything. Ooh. Ah, they have grown to be so beautiful. Such a wonderful fragrance. The scent of roses is so calming. I wonder why that is. Would it cause any trouble if I picked one? Ah, here's the maid. Well, hello there. Out for a midnight stroll, are you? Quite the peculiar hobby, madame. Um, I cannot spend as much time as I would like outside during the day, so I end up coming out at night. I apologise if I startled you. Oh no, not at all. There is a chilling, captivating beauty to the sight of your snow-white form standing there in the moonlit garden. I would hardly... Um, wh what are you doing out so late? I saw a figure through the window. On the slight chance it might be a burglar, I thought it might... It's my responsibility to ensure they did not break in. It was also the middle of the night when the grocer's servant broke into their safe. News of that spread quite far. I'm sure you have heard about it. Oh, but Gamash was in prison some time ago. Dear me, I cannot seem to get my head out of the past. Um, do you intend to give me that white rose? That do you intend to give that white rose to someone? Yes, I was thinking about giving it to my husband. While I expect he has little fondness for such feminine tastes, the scent of flowers has a truly calming effect. He might find it relaxing when he needs a reprieve from his work. Oh, is that so? You are very kind-hearted. Speaking of white roses, the rose he meant to give you was the same shade of white. Oh, he... But when you touched it, it turned a deep shade of red. Is she talking about... Yeah, in the first story. <coughs> Sorry, the... um. Yeah, the first one. There was but a single white rose in the garden, so he was unable to give it to you as he had wished. In its place, he had a decorative rose fashioned for you. And what exactly are you referring to? Oh dear, do you not remember? And I'm, I, I am to assume you have forgotten what happened to the rose accessory as well. He was unable to give that to you either. But that time, because you rejected the gift. I am not criticising you for that decision, of course. You had a perfectly good reason for not accepting it. Heartbroken from having lost you, you buried the rose in this garden. Over the years, the roses in the garden withered away and in their place grew a thick, unsightly nest of weeds. <coughs> oh dear. Many, many years later, that accessory was took up by a beast. And curiously enough, it had not a speck of rust on it. A, a beast? You do not remember him either? A foreign man, through his interaction with you, almost regained his humanity. I, I'm sorry. I, I have no idea what you speak of. The only gift I have ever received from a man is my finicus wheel. And furthermore, I have only lived in this mansion for a year. While the garden was not as thriving as it is now, it was certainly not in ruins when I arrived. Because I had been taking care of it, yes. But for whatever reason, by my hands alone, I was unable to make it into anything quite as splendid as it is now. Once you arrived and began to work on it, however, just look around. You have restored it to its former glory, to the magnificence of the flaxen-haired family's time. I promise I am not trying to fault you for anything. Now that I think about it, it makes sense you would not remember. Though you, you are still you, you are different than before. Different, though not in the sense you are a wholly distinct person. Tell me, is your name... Again? Alright, okay, we're not even going to get the name. My name is... Yes, but you should already know that. A again? More proof that you are indeed you. Did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person you are waiting for? What? What? <clears throat> now I'm confused. What are you talking about? 
I have met you many times, and I know of your past, of events that transpired long, long ago. Um, I, I, I'm telling you the truth. I first came to this mansion just a year ago. Until then, I had never left my country, or even set foot out of my house. We did not have any servants, neither. So where, then, are you saying we met? This mansion, of course. But I... I'm telling the truth. It was a year ago, shortly after my parents fell ill and received an offer for my marriage. I knew something had to be done. I knew, and so I... So I... I'm telling the truth. If that is what you remember, then I do not doubt you. But I also suspect I know why you seem so flustered. Are there moments when your memories seem... hazy? When it seems like important details have fallen through the cracks. And you need to fret. One day, eventually, you shall remember all. One day. Wait. Wait. Mm -hmm. Are we the white-haired girl? Is that what? Are we? Hmm. I've always assumed it was a guy. I can't remember if she's referred to as... She just said master. That could be. We could be the white-haired girl. I wonder. <clears throat> what the hell is this? A white rose? Did she leave this here? A flower? What does she think she's doing? Is she trying to aggravate me? A garden. A damned rose garden's the whole problem. Flowers serve no purpose but to deceive. That garden is a sign of weakness. It has no place in this house. Oh shit. Approximately a week had passed since then. The white-haired girl was, as usual, spending her time in her room reading, staying inside the house. Then Maria barged in. Madam, madam! Oh my, you're out of breath. What happened? What happened is we have a big problem. The, the garden, the rose garden. The, the garden. All the roses you put so much love and care into growing are being chopped down. We'll lose them all if we don't hurry. <gasps> Upon hearing the news, the white-haired girl dashed from her room and toward the garden, with Maria fo following close behind. When she arrived, she saw a dozen or so sweaty, rugged men at work, Jacobo shouting orders. The men clearly had no concept of how much a single flower was worth no concern whatsoever for their beauty. But they mercilessly, thoughtlessly hacked away at the shrubs like they were not but weeds. Each flower they tore from the earth extinguished another of the many lives the white-haired girl had put so much time and effort into tending for. Jacopo, what are you? Oh, hello, Maria. I didn't expect you would come with her. Why would you do it? Why? Why, it goes without saying. This house has no need of a garden. Damn flowers have no place here. Might as well do something worthwhile with the soil. A miniature railroad would be a better use of the space, and certainly a great deal easier on the eyes. I could even get my hand on some genuine wheels. The same wheels being used on the revolutionary transcontinental railroad. Ten or twenty years down the line, they'll be worth a fortune. Jacopo. You know how much this garden meant to me, don't you? Did it honestly have no place here? Flowers have a calming effect on people. They give you peace. They are not, by any means, worthless. So you're saying that White Rose was your passive-aggressive way of telling me to calm down? Wow. Wow, mate. Not at all. I, I simply thought you... At the end of the day, you're just using them for your own purposes, to trick and deceive. To you, this rose garden was nothing but... Jacopo! You've gone too far. This isn't right. Hm. Gone too far? This is my mansion. What I do with my property is my business. With that rose arch out of the picture, we'll have a much better view. There won't be anything blocking the sun any longer. Weren't you supposed to be sensitive to sunlight? Spend too much time out here and you're liable to fall ill. Get back inside now, you too, Maria. Yes, you are a complete fucking asshole, Jacobo. 
The poor thing, though she did not say a word, was surely thinking. Are you truly that determined to rob me of my sanctuary? The words twirled around in her head, unable to make the final journey to her lips. She stood there, looking down at her own feet as her husband marched off, and listened to the screams of the roses being reaped. After being torn down by Jacopo, the garden reverted to a state of ruined desolation. A shame, after all the work that went into restoring it to the beauty it had under the flaxen-haired family. And as Jacopo had said, in its place went scraps of metal, train wheels, prototype models, carbon rods. These items may have had value for him, but I certainly do not think it was worth robbing his wife of a place that made her feel comfortable just so he could store them there. Besides, I was rather fond of the rose garden myself. The roses seemed to evoke a sense of nostalgia in me. I felt as though, somewhere far beyond the edge of my memories, I had seen another garden of roses, modest though it may have been. But I cannot remember when it was. Does that come as a surprise to you? I am quite sure there are periods of the mansion's history of which I am not aware. But in any case, Jacobo had caused many people great pain in order to repurpose that garden for himself, and he continued to walk all over his wife. Whenever she tried to do something kind for him, he would brush her off saying, that's not your place. He paid no mind whatsoever to the looks of dejection that rose to her face each time he rejected her. I was beginning to wonder if anything she had said about the man he had been a year earlier was actually true, and if it was true. Could a person really go through such a drastic change of heart in such a short time? What do you think, Master? I... No, I have spoken enough about me already. I seem to be talking a lot about myself this time. But that is hardly appropriate behaviour for a maid. Now, let us return to our tale. That evening, the white-haired girl sat in her room staring sorrowfully at her finicus wheel. A small mirror before her, she tried spinning the paper disc, but it was just not the same as before. Her husband was not there at her side, and even more critically, there was not a smile on her face. And then, she heard a faint knock on her door. Who is it? It's me, madam, it's me. May I come in? Oh, Maria. Of course, come in. What are you doing here at this time of night? <laughs> was just wondering how you're doing. Should I have left you alone? Oh, it's no trouble at all. I'm always glad to have you. You're making me blush, madam. I got the feeling you were a little down in the dumps. But I'm not here because I need to be. I just kinda ended up here, I guess. Maria. Sorry, I'm not making any sense. I can be a bit of a busybody, you know? Trouble with boundaries, I guess. Never been able to fix that. No, no, I, I don't consider you intrusive at all. I cannot count how many times your bright smile and cheerful energy have shone a light in me when things were dark. If I didn't have you, I would have given up already. You seem to see right through me. Even now, you are exactly right. I am feeling a little dispirited. The garden was an eber even bigger life raft than I thought. Perhaps I am being overly dramatic, but the roses were almost like children to me. I get it, I do. You put your heart and soul into tending that garden. It was obvious how much you loved them. Of course it's going to hurt watching a bunch of men stomp all over your flowers when you care for them like your own children. Now, I know this. I said this once already, but you don't need to force yourself to put up with him, really. You don't have to bend to his will just because you're a woman can survive without him. Anytime you want to walk away, that's your choice. I mean, I'd sure be lonely if you left, madam. But your happiness is more important than any of that. So, you know? Thank you, Maria. I truly do appreciate it. But I... I wouldn't... I would still like to wait for the day I can see his warm smile once more. If you say so. Well, in that case, I guess I'll just have to be there to back you up. It'll be alright. You leave everything to this holy virgin. I'll have a stupid grin on my face no matter how down you're feeling. 
You really are the reincarnation of the Mother of God, aren't you? Oh, you. I told you, it's just a joke. Eh, whatever. So, hey, madam, how about a dance? A dance? At this time of night? Yep, and since it's so late, no loud music. All you get is a little whistling courtesy of me. But, but this room is too small for... We'll use the Great Hall. Wouldn't that put us in everyone else's way? He would probably complain about the noise too. No need to worry. Jacobo's out inspecting some factory or something today. After that, he's got a meeting, so he'll be staying the night elsewhere. The rest of the maids are in their rooms chatting away. No one will notice. Where I come from, we dance all the time. We take eat, drink and be merry to heart. No food or drink for us, but we absolutely can dance. Dance is a great way to forget all your cares. I'm not much of a dancer. No big deal. Nobody's watching. Come on, put on a little fancy perfume and let's have some fun. I don't have any perfume though. Didn't think so. You've got all the right ingredients, madam. But you don't try to make anything special out of them. You've got so much potential, but not even a decent sized wardrobe. At the very least, you should wear some perfume. Which is why, ta-da, I brought some with me. The maids are in love with this stuff. It's a big hit with women all over the country. The base is vanilla, and it's got several other fragrances mixed in. Give it a try. It smells divine. But, but, Maria, I... Come on, what's the harm? Just a little splash on your wrist, like so. What do you think? Ah. You were right. It smells wonderful. Doesn't it? So, you like it? Yes, very much so. Excellent. Now, off we go to the Great Hall. Are we really going to dance? You bet your butt we are. It's not healthy to hole up in your room all day. I know you can't handle a lot of sunlight, but you've got still got to have some fun and move your body. Come on, let's go. Oh, Maria. Though she looked outwardly uncertain as Maria led her forward, hand around her wrist, the hair, white-haired girl seemed to be enjoying herself on the inside. Having spent her life without a single friend, she never dreamed the day would come when she would find herself being dragged through the empty halls of a dark mansion by another woman. How romantic. Maria's presence seemed to shine a light upon the quiet corridor. It would have been a very lonely trek without her. Maria spun around, gave an impish smirk and raised her point point her finger to her lips with a soft shh. The sight of it caused the white-haired girl to chuckle quietly. The two of them on their way to their secret private ball were like two adolescent girls. In short order they arrived at the great hall. My heart was pounding all the way here. What's there to be nervous about? It's not like you're breaking any rules. Only kids get in trouble for staying up late. Once you've grown up, you're responsible for yourself. <laughs> I will say, though, that it seems rather odd for two women to dance together. Oh, if you're having a good time, what does it matter what's been... <laughs> nice. If you're having a good time, what does it matter what's between your legs? Where I come from, there's dances where families lock arms in a big ring and go round in circles. So who says two girls can't have some fun together? I imagine you had many good moments with your family. Well, I don't have a family anymore. What? Alright, so I'll show you how it's done. Watch carefully, because you're up next. Ah, okay. With a wide grin on her face, Maria began whistling softly and prancing across the floor with an energetic rhythm. It was not the kind of complicated dance you'd see at fancy parties. The motions were simple, flowing, unembellished, a folk dance, I suppose you might call it. She seemed to be improv improvising a little bit as well. But in any event, the white-haired girl was captivated. Despite it being a sequence of steps anyone could replicate, Maria breathed life into the dance. She was neither as lithe as an acrobat, nor as light on her feet as a professional dancer. She was her own lively, beautiful self. Maria twirled in place, the skirt of her maid uniform billowing gently up around her. With a smile, she extended her hand toward the white-haired girl. She hesitated for a moment, 
But as if being pulled forward by some invisible force, she took Maria's hand. Hand in hand, Maria ushered the white-haired girl into her dance. It was just the two of them, but you could almost see the crowd forming around them. The other people stepping up to join in. That's it, madam. Doing great. Now lift your leg up. Good, and spin like so. This is not easy, Maria. I'm having trouble following along. You can do it. Looking good so far. You're a natural, madam. Oh, Maria. I won't fall for your flattery. I mean it. The whispers of the two girls. Their muffled laughs. Step, pop, step, step. The rustling of fabric. Many different soft sounds layered at one another, creating a little bubble of happiness in the centre of the hall. The white-haired girl's movements were a great deal clumsier than Maria's, but Maria would never disparage her for that. On the contrary, she showered her with praise. As flustered as the white-haired girl appeared, I imagine she was quite pleased. Before long, the tightness in her face muscles loosened, a smile spread across her lips, and she began to brighten up. See? What'd I tell you? Fun, huh? Yes, I'm quite surprised. Both that I can dance and that I can enjoy doing it so much. Haha, <laughs> glad to hear it. They exchanged looks and both laughed. That might have been the first time I'd ever seen the white-haired girl so delighted. However, because of her infirmity, she quickly found herself out of breath, her porcelain skin flushed red. Maria immediately stopped for a break. She could surely have continued dancing for some time yet, but Maria was conscientious of the white-haired girl's physical condition. She looked over at Maria regretfully. My apologies, if only I had more stamina. I am hardly a suitable partner for you, Maria. Sure you are. This is all to cheer you up, madam, so as long as you're having fun, nothing else matters. And heck, I'm enjoying myself plenty too. What do you think? Wouldn't it be nice to do this again sometime? Whenever you're feeling down, let's dance. If, if, you, if you really do enjoy dancing with a frail girl like me, then I'd be glad to. Have a little more confidence in yourself, madam. You're so pretty and kind-hearted. I have loads of fun when I'm with you. So you don't need to be so hard on yourself. Got it? Thank you. The pleasure is mine. It is an absolute honour to have the rare opportunity to see such a bright smile on your face, madam. <laughs> my apologies for keeping you out so late. I should get back to my room. Oh, I didn't even realise what time it was. I'm more than up for a little more gum flapping. You have improved my mood more than adequately. I would not want you to be tired for work tomorrow. Ah, okay. Well then, let's get out of here. Yes, let's. Smiles on both of their faces they made to exit the great hall. However, before they reached the door, it swung open. A man's towering shadow cast the two women into darkness, his cold, bitter glare affixed on them. If I had even the faintest premonition this might happen, I would have done anything in my power to stop the two cheery girls on their way to the hall. But I am eternally powerless. What are you doing? Standing before them in the doorway was the master of the house, Jacopo. Ah, I thought you would not be back until tomorrow. And how would you know that? No, forget that. Does my staying the night elsewhere have any effect on you? You were just waiting for this opportunity, weren't you? No, what would I possibly want you out of the house for? I'm sure you know better than anyone. What? What is that smell? Perfume? When did you get perfume? And I have to say, you seem to be having quite the time. Look at you. You're out of breath, red as a beet. I made the right decision coming back. Where the hell were you going? No, I wasn't going. Jacopo, calm down, seriously. You shut it. Now you're taking the tramp's side. Wow. I have told you before you are not to leave this house without first consulting me. Or do you mean to tell me you've forgotten? God, your ears aren't just for show, all right? They're better than that. They'll even throw out the parts you don't want to hear. No, no, I swear. I was not doing anything you... Silence! I have no interest in your excuses. 
You're always watching from the shadows, observing, trying not to step on anyone's toes. And in the back of your mind, you're mocking me. Oh, I... Listen up and listen good. You just try stepping out of line again. You just try disgracing me again. You'll not get away with it. Wow, this guy is... Wait, why, isn't, why don't they just say that they weren't going anywhere? For the love of God, get back to your room now. You too, Maria. Uh, all right. Wow, she's not even saying anything either. God, what is this sickeningly sweet smell? How utterly infuriating. Oh, this guy sucks. It's like I don't like perfume either. Do you not like anything nice? What the fuck? Did you like coat himself in motor oil or something? It'll take forever to get this off me. I always thought you had at least some sense of taste. <coughs> wow. That is one way to totally destroy someone's fucking soul. Why did he have to disparage her soul? What did she do wrong? What did she do to deserve that? He did nothing whatsoever wrong. He deserved none of the ridicule he showered her with. However, she was not a strong-willed woman. She did not have the courage to retort to the man yelling at her. And neither did Maria, it seemed. Without another word, they both scrambled out of the great hall away from Jacopo. The white-haired girl was a painfully miserable sight to behold. The cheer had drained from her spirit and the rosy hue from her now pale cheeks. She was hunched forward slightly, looking like a small, scared animal. Say, um... I'm sorry, this is all my fault. If I hadn't asked you to dance, and me bringing the perfume only made things worse. No, you need not feel bad about anything, Maria. Everything you did was with my best interests at heart. So, don't worry. I will be fine. Uh, um, so, madam, I'll clear everything up. I'll re I really am to blame after all. He wouldn't even give you the time of day if you tried. He's a stubborn little shit when he's mad. I'll talk to him. He's more likely to listen to me. I'll make sure he knows he was jumping to conclusions and that I'm the one who dragged you out there to dance. And also that I forced you to wear the perfume. I'll clear everything up, okay? So please, you cheer up. It would be best if I could tell him myself. But yes, you're right. He would likely not listen to me. He rarely ever listens to me. I should be ashamed. I cannot even hold a simple conversation with my own husband. These things happen, you know? It's not easy being married. In a lot of ways. Wait, would you know this? Yes. Yes, you're right. I apologize for having you do something so unpleasant. But I would appreciate that. Oh, no, no problem. I'm happy to. No need to apologize. I've got this. I'll dunk his head in cold water until he's not, he's not blowing steam from his ears anymore. I'll cool him down. Promise. And you never know. Maybe he'll, open up, he'll be open to listening. You could be back to the way you were a year ago in no time. Don't you worry. I'll take care of it, madam. Be positive. You look so much better with a smile on your face. All right. Thank you. I doubted Jacopo would listen, even coming from Maria. And I imagine the white-haired girl felt much the same way. However, she grabbed onto that sliver of hope. She let herself dream. She let herself believe, even just faintly, that everything would go well. Such is human nature. When uncertainty has you in its clutches, you grasp at whatever, you, whatever hope you can find to keep yourself afloat. That night, she did not sleep. She was afraid that even in her dreams, Jacopo would be shouting at her. She felt as though her memories of a year prior were beginning to crumble away. You have memories of one day. That is what you're holding on to. Damn. Jacopo is a complete asshole, man. Holy shit. Right, let's, uh... The next morning, Jacopo stood alone in the den by the billiards table. He appeared to be rather agitated. His face was twisted into a frown, 
his pointer finger tapping restlessly against the hard surface of the table. Evidently, no longer able to stay in one place, he paced a circle around the table, then swiped up a rack in a queue, setting up a game of nine ball. I'm not intimately familiar with the ways by which men entertain themselves, but in truth, I was bewitched by the sight of him leaning over the table. It almost seemed as though a steel rod ran straight from his shoulder to the tip of his outstretched finger, upon which the cue was secured by another finger looped over it. With a smooth, flowing motion, he thrust the cue forward, slightly pulling back and repeating the process once more, before ramming it into the cue ball, sending it rolling into the diamond of coloured balls. A chorus of clicks and clacks emanated from the centre of the room. Balls collided with one another and ricocheted off the cushioned walls, a few landing in the pockets situated around the edge of the table. Jacopo appeared to have accomplished this with little trouble, but I imagine merely striking the cue ball with a stick would be rather difficult for someone inexperienced. But despite his accomplishment, it seemed to only exacerbate his agitation. Lousy positioning, he muttered. I hadn't the faintest idea what he was talking about. What should have been a game for his enjoyment, he went about with a constant look of exasperation. I suspect he was using it as a way to blow off steam. And as a result, the tension in the air was palpable. I felt it would be improper to intrude upon him, even considering my distaste for the man. There was an undeniable beauty in every motion he made, every perfectly, perfectly audible clap of billiard balls bouncing off one another. It was an enchanting sight. But then, someone without the slightest regard or appreciation for beauty came marching in with a hammer to shatter it like glass. Gotta say, that was impressive. A man leaned against the frame of the open door. He was neither a resident nor worker of the mansion. The man's face was covered in scraggly stubble, his body draped in grime caked garments. His eyes were sunken so deep it was as though I was looking at a fleshless skull, though there was a feral glimmer in them. Needless to say, he was not prim and proper. How long have you been there? Not long, but man, I can't help laughing. You were completely on your, in your own world there. What do you want, and why did you send a maid for me? Don't be such a hard ass. We ain't strangers, man. Why should family have to go through the maids to see you? That just ain't right, brother. Your doors should always be open for family. Holy shit, is that his brother? Enough! I am not your family. We're bound by something even stronger than blood. By our family, our Koska. Koska? Don't! You only ever bring up the Koska when it's in your interest. Ooh, scary. Come on now, what am to you, little Jack? Where the little boy used to call me Uncle Tommy go? Don't you dare use that godforsaken name. Get the hell out of my sight. What in God's name are you doing here? The man hailed from the same country as Jacopo. They had a peculiar relationship, though they were not blood-related, he referred to Jacopo's family. They came from a sunny island in the Mediterranean Sea, a place of many unique customs and an entire underground society. Koska was a word that originated from and referred to those underworld families. It would be another 30 or so years before organisations like theirs received much public attention. At the time, they were not widely known. Just a short step into the future and they would grow so powerful the very mention of them would send a chill through the room. Hey now, that's no way to talk to a fellow Birzati. You're on the shortlist to become the next Capo Fam Famiglia. Oh my days, Capo Famiglia. We respect our brothers, that's how we operate. You could go home and say you threw me out of your house. How'd you like those rumours to spread? The soon to be Capo Capo Famiglia wouldn't even listen to a little request. Very much doubt anything you said could damage my reputation. I ain't been exiled yet, and as long as I'm still one of them, they won't ignore me. Ooh, that's some mighty fine looking whiskey you got there. Don't mind if I do. Nothing here is for you to drink. Booze is my lifeblood, man. No love for a brother? You worthless leech. It surely wouldn't be long before you find yourself in exile. If you're lucky enough to get off the hook with just exile, that is. A child could snap that scrawny neck of yours. If I'm gonna go, I'd rather go tied up, tortured for days, covered in tiny little cuts from head to toe. You sick bastard. You disgust me. Call me a carnal adventurer. 
I despise the mundane. Last thing I want is to go out like a wet fart. Is this what you came for? To waste my time with your insipid nonsense? Oh, hardly. Surely you have an idea what I'm here for. And how much I need. <laughs> you damn maggot. A worthless leech, a sick bastard, and a damn maggot. <laughs> what other names you got up your sleeve for me? You son of a... Do you honestly think this is how you ask for a favour? Whoops, excuse me. I beg of thee, oh esteemed future Capofamiglia. Famiglia? Damn, I can't even pronounce that. I'm bone broke, not even enough money to put bread on the table. Could you spare a little for a brother? You brought this on yourself, I'm sure. I hear more than enough stories about you, and hardly any of them pleasant. Drinking, gambling, gambling, debauchery. I'm humiliated to be in the same cusk as you. You want to make money playing, you got to learn the game first. Says the worm who played himself into oblivion. Now, do you honestly believe I'll give you anything? Oh, but you will. You got no choice. Cosca rules. You're required to help a fellow countryman. Especially considering how few of us there are stranded in this colossal landmass. You won't even notice the money's missing. It ain't because you can't, but because you don't wanna. But Jacopo, being a tight ass does nothing for you. Me coming to you for help keeps your good name clean. That's the thing about being boss. You quietly keep little shits like me out of trouble. So that trouble don't come raining back on you. Hmm. <laughs> you do not seem to understand your place. Rather than lecturing me, you should be on your hands and knees begging and crying for my help. If that's what you want, I'll gladly comply. Happy to kiss your boots while I'm at it. Don't even think about it. Know this. There won't be a second time. I'll be reporting your conduct to the family back home. I look forward to seeing how they deal with you. <laughs> Just try to have a little mercy, would ya? Hey. Hey. Is there a maid or Hey. Hey. Is there a maid around? It doesn't matter who. How may I serve you, master? Get a single stack from the safe. Here's the key. It goes without saying, but don't touch anything else. Give the money to that man as you're escorting, escorting him out the door. As you wish. Is that all you needed? Yes. Now get to it. Very well. Excuse me. Well, well. That's one looker I made you got there. But there's something, I don't know, eerie, strange about her. Fancy that. We agree on something. How long she been working here? Couldn't tell you. As I recall, she came with the house. Is that the kind of woman you fancy? A gal you can't read will always be interesting. Is that so? Now that you mentioned it, how old is that woman? I suppose it doesn't much matter. Oh yeah, Jacopo. One other thing I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> what is it this time? And if it's more of your blather, I will shoot you dead where you stand. Now, now, no need for threats. This one's about your, uh, better half. What about my wife? Well, uh, to put it simply, uh, yeah. She came to me asking for advice, looking a little distressed. My wife asked you for advice? Yup. From the sounds of it, you're pretty rough on the little lady. That's just ain't right, man. You managed to snag yourself abroad that pretty. You ought to treat her at least a little better. You hear? You look good with a smile. You gotta make her show it to you every once in a while. Why would she come to you about that? Don't ask me. Maybe she ain't got no one else to talk to. And you know, for whatever it's worth, I'm part of the same Costca. Guessing she thought I'd get through to you easier. Really, you just have to put a little more thought into how you act around her, and she'll be smiling for you like always. Oh yeah, I've just got, I've got just the thing. Women love this stuff, I'm sure she'll be thrilled. Is that perfume? Haven't you heard? Everyone's talking about it. I'm a big fan of stuff too. It smells great. Pretty girl will smile at you wearing some of this. Any man been loving an instant. You've never given her nothing fashionable before, have you? May look like just, may just 
look like just scented water, but you can't let that fool you. Go on, give it to her. You like a nice smelling lady too, don't you? A little bit of scent can give a different flavour to your nighttime excitement. <laughs> Vanilla. Well, I've said my piece, so I'll be taking my leave. Don't want to keep your maid waiting too long and getting her bad side. But hold on, Thomas. Why would she... Make it last. That's all the advice your Uncle Tommy has for you. Ciao. Wait, Thomaso. Interesting. She went to this guy? Sounds a bit sus. You could go after him. It would be a simple task to catch him. Grab him by the neck. Make him tell me. Tell me where he spoke with her and what she told him. But why? Why will my legs not move? Asking him for advice. Fashionable perfume. Her smile. It was good with a smell. She'll be smelling for you like always. That can't be. She hardly ever smells around me. But she'll she'll smile for him? Last night when she was short of breath, having such a grand time wearing that perfume. Getting ready to... Wait, what the fuck? I don't think she, that was only last night. There's no way she would have asked this guy. Getting ready to leave the house. Just who was that smile for? God damn it. Don't you think I'll let you run free any longer? Ooh, this is not going to end well. His eyebrows were furrowed, creating deep creases on his forehead. Several servants stood off to the side, watching their master attentively as he stomped past them down the corridor. However, no one said a word to him. Had I not been preoccupied attending to his countrymen, I likely could have prevented it. Yeah, right. why do you? Why are you always conveniently in the wrong place at the wrong time? The look on his face would have made it obvious something bad was about to happen. Something that would serve only to further his, her misfortune. He was already in a less than ideal situation. And it was perched on the edge of a hill, soon to begin rolling down into even worse territory. Jacopo? What's, what's the matter? If you wanted to visit, you could have said something, rather than coming in without knocking. Is that really necessary? Pardon? Is there something you so desperately want to keep from me that I must knock before entering? That I should have to let you know in advance that I'm coming? But what? But what are you... Well, is there? You went to talk to him behind my back, I'm told. What do you tell him? You moan to him about my behaviour? Well... Uh, ah... Uh. That hurts. You told him I'm rough with you. You cried on his shoulder because I'm not nice enough. Him, of all people. But wait, Jacopo. You're mistaken. Let me... Silence. Not a word. Not a single godforsaken word. The only thing that comes out of your mouth is excuses. Lies and fabrication. You put on this sweet, innocent little girl act. But what's really going through your head? Maybe I should just rip that mask off your face. Oh, Jacopo. You look down on me, your nobility. And I'm just a nobody who married into it. No, 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 stop. Let go of me, please. When did it start? How long have you been seeing him? Who else have you been seeing? Covering yourself in fashionable perfume and smiling, even though you'll never smile around me. Please, let me go. I can see, I can see it in your eyes. He's just a worthless commoner. But why would you think that? Why will you not listen to me? Silence! It's all your fault. Every last thing. I tell you not to leave the house, but you do. I tell you to do as I say, but you ignore me. Every last thing you do drives me mad. I don't have time right now to deal with this. To rack my mind over you, over a woman. I don't have time for it. Why do you not do as I say? N uh, mm. Do you not have enough already? Huh? Will you not be satisfied until you've taken even my arms and legs? I've given you money, clothing, everything. You have an incredible life. Look around you, that life of luxury you and your parents wanted. Right, right here, you have it. What more could you possibly want? Why do you insist on being unfaithful? Un unfaithful? You think what I'm doing is unfaithful to you? How else should I describe it? You leave your room, despite my ordering you not to. Don't think I don't know. When you came to the den the other day, you had your eyes on the other men. I did not. I had no such inclination. 
Enough! Not another word from you. I have no interest in your excuses. If that's how you're going to act, then say goodbye to your freedom. You're forbidden from leaving the mansion, or your room for that matter, or even speaking to the servants. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll make you a new room. Too many people come in and out of this one. It'll be somewhere quieter, out of the way. You'll like the gar you like the garden. How about I put it there? If you leave that room without my permission, this time, I'll kill you. Oh my god. Fuck this guy. <clears throat> Why? Why will you not listen to me? Jacopo, the master of the house, likely loved the white-haired girl. That's what I saw in their exchange. Normally, love is supposed to be a sweet, warm, wonderful emotion. It makes you care for, value that person even more than yourself. But it was the exact opposite for him. I never knew that love could be such a painful thing. How did his love end up so twisted? What did he expect to happen by confining and abusing the woman he loved? Perhaps he was conscious of that. To be human is to sometimes find oneself driven by uncontrollable internal impulses. A few days later, Jacobo dragged the white-haired girl from her chamber and led her outside. The garden she had once loved was now a thing of the past. It had become a dreary space. Neria rose in sight, and being taken there did nothing to improve her mood, only sadden her further. The cold, grey piles of metal freckling the barren earth seemed to mock her. Her husband led her, the lady of the house, to a shed that had been repurposed into a Spartan living area. She begged and pleaded, but Jack Pogue would not have it. He shoved her into the sad little shack and locked the door. Dear, oh dear, this is fucking horrible. Oh. Da, 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 da. And I think, first of all, let me just uh, save. I think we'll leave that, we'll leave it there. Um, as this this uh, white haired girl just doesn't ever fucking get a break does she holy crap this guy uh, just gets worse and worse from here but yeah I'm not seeing I'm assuming that this is going to be like a constant thread I mean the first two stories had her like not suffering a great fate and this one is no different so yes We'll leave it there for now, uh, and I'll continue this later. But for now, I am Ash Mannix. This is the house in Fata Morgana. She is quite miserable. But we will see you next time. Bye-bye.